Hello and welcome. In a previous video, I illustrated step-by-step -step how to create and configure a virtual machine. But once the virtual machine was created, I didn't walk through the various configuration settings and explain them to you. That's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. So on the left-hand side, you can see my Ubuntu virtual machine. So to view the settings and optionally modify them, we can right-click over the virtual machine and select settings. Note, you cannot modify the settings if the virtual machine is running. It must be in a powered off state to modify the settings, but you can view them while it, even when it's in a powered on state. On the left hand side, we have several categories that correspond to the physical components that typically exist in a physical computer. So let's start from the top, select the general tab. So under general, we have a basic sub tab and this here we can view or modify the name of the computer, the type and indeed the version. Very good. By selecting advanced, we can see the location of any snapshots that we take. So Oracle Virtual uh, VM VirtualBox allows us to take snapshots. Actually, at this point, it's no harm to show. If you're curious, where is the physical location on your hard drive in which the virtual machines are stored? Well, believe it or not, the equivalent of this um, folder location in your setup. So I'm going to show you that now. Let me open up Windows Explorer. So this exactly here, in my case, this is the location, the physical location on my physical host hard drive where my virtual machine is located. So as you can see, this is the virtual machine hard drive, the .vdi. Remember, I created it in the previous video to be of 25 gigabytes, but as you can see, it's only two megabytes. That's because it's completely blank and it is a dynamically allocated hard disk. Hence, when I actually come to install Ubuntu Linux in a future video, you will see that this will grow very quickly. Secondly, you'll see there's a file called ubuntu.vbox. Believe it or not, this is simply an XML file in which you, uh, let me show you actually, show you right click out of a notepad. Here you go. This is simply an XML file that captures the configuration details that we specify in the dialog box that we're looking at a few moments ago and we'll look at in a few moments time. So this is just an XML file that captures these details. Okay. So back to the configuration, um, shared clipboard. This allows us to share the clipboard from the host to the guest, the guest to the host or bi-directional. This is really nice. So you can, in effect, uh, go highlight some text on your host computer, press control C, and then go to your virtual guest computer and press control V. And likewise, drag and drop can be enabled. Okay, these are all options. If we want to type in a description ourselves, we can type in the text. And if you want to enable encryption, of your virtual computer. It's possible by checking this and typing in the relevant information. Okay, so that's the general tab. Under the systems tab, well, you can pretty much guess it's system information. So we have a motherboard tab. So if you remember, I configured my virtual machine to have four gigabytes of memory. I could increase it here or decrease it. I can specify the boot order of my virtual machine. So these are virtual floppies, virtual optical disk, virtual hard disk, and so forth. Chipset, pointing device. Don't worry about this. USB tablet simply means a USB mouse. That's all that means. And you can enable various extended features. Um, under the processor tab, as you can see, um, I've allocated one physical CPU to my virtual machine. I have 12 CPUs in my physical host computer and I can allocate all the way up to the 12. Now you would never do that because your host operating system, my Windows 10 host operating system needs some CPUs to run. But I can allocate a lot more than one if I wanted, if I was doing some intensive workload. Likewise, for whatever processes I do allocate, I can set an execution cap. I can say only allocate 50% of the processor as opposed to 100% that I have now. And again, I can enable extended features here. Um, the PAE, when checked, the physical address extension feature on the host CPU will be exposed to the virtual machine and so on. Okay, so under your acceleration tab, again, some more advanced features. It is it is it's highly recommended that you do enable the VTX and the enable the nested paging. I highly recommend you enable those. Okay, so um, under display, again, if your virtual machine is going to um, do some advanced or intensive video processing, I would recommend allocating a lot more memory. 
um, monitor count. You can you can allocate up to eight monitors. Now I don't have eight monitors, but in theory you can allocate up to eight. Scale factor and so on. Acceleration. This is really useful. When checked, the virtual machine will be given access to the host 3D graphics cards if you have one installed and available. Likewise, enable 2D video acceleration. So you can enable these if you wish. You can enable remote display. So you can remotely display your virtual machine. You specify the information here, it's very nice. You can actually perform video capture. So a lot of YouTubers and gamers um, play their games in virtual machines and record them using um, the video capture feature that's built in to Oracle VirtualBox. Very nice. Um, okay, so under the storage section, again, we can add controller IDEs, SATA drives. You can click the circle there. You can add an IDE um, optical drive and then click cancel. You can add an IDE hard drive and so on. And um, down here, you can add new types of controllers. Okay, um, and so forth. Okay. Um, and you can specify the various types. It's really powerful. Um, under the audio section category, again, you can enable audio, you can choose which drivers you're going to use and so forth. Under the network tab, it's really nice. And um, VirtualBox supports four network adapters and um, being attached to a virtual machine. So by default, one adapter is enabled and there's two or three, you can add up to four, which is really nice. And then you can actually configure your network card to be like a NAT a bridge adapter, host only adapter. It's really, really nice. And then of course, there's advanced settings that you can select, you can choose the adapter type and so forth. It's really, really nice. Um, sorry, leave it enabled. Um, under serial ports, um, you can enable very, people rarely use serial ports nowadays, but it's possible. Under USB, you can enable USB one, two or three. In fact, I'm going to enable three, why not? Um, under shared folders, you can configure a shared folder. And in fact, I'm going to create a video um, as part of this video series on Oracle VirtualBox, uh, specifying exactly how to create a shared folder. So I'll explain that in that video. And lastly, the user interface, you can actually customize in, in detail exactly what um, menu tabs and menu uh, items are displayed. So for example, under file, I can choose to disable, for example, network operations. So as you can see, it's not displayed. If I wanted to, dis to disable the file tab itself, I would simply click on file like I, like I am doing now and see the way it's no longer highlighted in blue. So to enable it. So I would use the default settings, okay? And you can show where to display it. So that's just a quick overview of the various configuration settings of a virtual machine using Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please like it if you like it, or if you have any comments, please leave them below the video. Thank you very much.